My name is Nancy Campbell. I am a CBF endorsed chaplain and I serve with Caldwell Hospice and Palliative Care in Lenore, North Carolina. My neighbors are folks who are truly walking through the valley of the shadow of death. As a hospice chaplain, I have neighbors who are, are at the end of their lives and they are dealing with issues of illness and impending death. Some of my neighbors are caregivers. They take care of their family or their friend whose death will come soon. Others in my neighborhood are grieving for their loved one is now gone and they are left to mourn. My role is to provide spiritual support and pastoral care to all of these people. With God's help, I seek to be present and to assist those I serve as they draw on their own faith as they deal with these issues. It is a great privilege for me to walk alongside these pilgrims on their journey. I'd like to tell you about Mamie, an elderly woman in the final stage of her cancer. Mamie moved from another state to North Carolina so that she could live out her days in the home and the care of her family. She was a lifelong Christian, one of God's saints. But she was wary of me at first because I did not read to her from the authorized version of the Bible. She questioned my Christian faith. I pulled my King James Bible down from the shelf and Mamie and I worked through that issue together. A few weeks later, on the day before Mamie's death, I sat by her bedside and together we sang along with a CD of old hymns. We worshiped God and I knew that I was on holy ground as I witnessed this faithful woman praising the God of life as she prepared for her eternal reward. Being endorsed by Cooperative Baptist Fellowship is my connection to the larger church. Endorsement provides a professional validation that is required by my employer. Much more important to me, though, are the affirmation of my calling to this specific ministry and the prayer support of my Baptist family. Through chaplaincy endorsement, you show your concern for me as a minister as I minister in the hospice neighborhood. You offer me resources for ministry and you connect me with others in similar settings. I ask that you will continue to pray for me and for all CBF endorsed chaplains and pastoral counselors as we seek to be the presence of Christ with those in our neighborhoods. Well, it's only fitting that a chaplain named Rogers be uh, asked to welcome you to the neighborhood in which I serve, uh, the neighborhood of uh, Naval Chaplaincy. And it's my privilege to take the next couple of minutes just to share with you this unique ministry setting. Described by one chaplain aboard an aircraft carrier as a six-month youth lock-in, <laughs> the neighborhood of a Navy chaplain can encompass ministry to those serving in Marine Corps, Navy, and Coast Guard units. Commissioned as officers, we advise commanders on the moral and ethical implications of decisions that are often made under arduous circumstances, and we look to God as our only source of hope and of strength to provide some clarity amidst the fog of war. Called as chaplains, we're trusted friends and confidants of those same commanders and to all those that carry out their orders. We share meals with them on the mess decks, MREs in the field. We act as liaisons to uh, diverse cultures in our areas of operations. And sometimes there we break bread, offering the simple blessing, Lord, please protect me from that which I am thankful to receive. We provide a ministry of presence to those who have volunteered to serve the cause of freedom. We facilitate the right of religious liberty for those who bear the greatest burdens of its protection as we offer opportunities for worship and as we care for all whom we recognize are made in God's image. 
We oversee a neighbor, neighborhood watch program that cares for our own, but also reaches out to those in our world who have no voice. Our churches, our base chapels, spaces shared with the anchor chains of ships at sea, aircraft hangars and forward positions. Our services are sometimes interrupted by jets catapulting from four and a half acres of sovereign American territory afloat in hostile waters. Incoming fire at small battle positions or rocket mortar attacks at forward airfields in Iraq and Afghanistan. We comfort those who suffer the wounds of war and we offer a compassionate and a confidential ear for all of those who struggle with the issues of life that are common to us all. We know that the newest marine artillery piece makes a good altar and that the hydraulic lines on a CH-53 helicopter will always anoint us with oil. We may be given the sacred task of holding a dying marine or sailor. We write letters of comfort to families as we grieve in our own lives the loss of those that we also loved as family. We knock on doors to deliver the most feared news and and we arrive at those maternity wards to celebrate the most anticipated events. We're expected to have all the answers and we're reminded daily that it's never about us and that without the love of Christ, we have absolutely nothing to offer. We look to our spouses. We ask them to make, to remake our homes as places of comfort and refuge, to establish deep roots that are conducive to grafting and transplanting through frequent moves and long separations. Our children pause to answer the simple question, where are you from? And we pray that they come to terms with the fact that God is in the assignment business and that they embrace and adopt the motto as we have, home is where the Navy sends you. In short, we have the privilege of bringing and being the presence of Christ during these pivotal times in the lives of these people and in the history of our nation. I'm thankful that in this sacred task, I'm a part of a greater community and I enjoy the fellowship and the encouragement of fellow servants. And at this time, I would ask that all of my fellow chaplains and pastoral counselors stand to be recognized. And I thank you for the honor of introducing you here this morning.